Hello guys, welcome. This video is a sequel to the one I made about a year ago where I discussed how to email and impress professors. So I recommend that if you haven't seen that, you should watch that first. I'm also going to link the video in the description below. Let's get started. The truth is there are really no universal rules when it comes to um, how to write your subjects for your email. Um, however, I usually advise that one, you keep it simple. Of course, you don't want like a very, very long uh, subject for your email. And also, this is very important in uh, my experience that you find a way to include your name in the subject line okay now and i've um, listed some examples here so and uh, the reason why you want to you know uh, include your name is um, for the professor to remember your name okay you want them to remember your name that's basically the essence of this whenever the um, admissions committee are sitting or if a question is asked even if the professor does not you know did not reply your email the fact that um, you've sent an email with your name in the subject line because they probably will read the subject but not the email or maybe they read the email and decide not to reply and um, if you are followed up many times the name will keep popping up so whenever your name is called during the admissions committee meeting, someone or that professor will probably remember you. That um, you will probably remember that you know he he or she received something from you. So let's talk about the beginning of your letter. Now, if you are sending it via email, just like I recommend most of the time, you don't need this address um portion. You don't need this address portion. All you have to do is start with um, dear doctor. So, like I said, if you are sending within an email, you just have to start with um, dear doctor. Writing a captivating introduction in paragraph one. Now, the first thing you want to do in paragraph one is to state your current affiliation that is what do you do now and show of course show your interests and tell them why you are writing so the second thing you want to do or the third thing is to um, tell us how did you get here how do you get in my email right you want to I want to know how you got to you know know me so was it true a person of interest, a successful alumni? Is it true my publications or talk? So tell me how you discovered my um, research or my lab, how you discovered me. That's very important. Now, another thing you want to state here is, so now that you have discovered me, why are you interested in me? Why are you interested in my research? Why are you interested in our department? Do we have similar um, interests? You know, so if this is the time you want to tell the professor or the, the, whoever you're writing to how their mission or their research interests align with yours. So if you are changing fields or something, this may be the right time to tell them why. And if you're um, so that that why it's it's going to be based on your purpose, your ultimate goal, and why you think that particular environment or the research lab is beneficial to achieve that goal. You will see that I said for better flow, you may want to arrange you know your sentences in this order, and um, of course, I always recommend sending. Um, this kind of letters to two or three professors or different departments because you never know where your luck will be So if you are going to do this that means if you're going to send um, um, This request letter out to multiple professors This is a paragraph that you would have to customize 
so you can't send the same thing out to everybody of course i think you should know that already and um a very good suggestion for you if you're going to write this paragraph i'm not saying you have to do it but in my experience from all the people i've worked with when you state that um, you got to know of a professor through his or her research or through his or her um or her talk somewhere it tends to you know stroke their ego a little bit they feel kind of proud of their work and um, because you are interested you've shown interest in that research they tend to you know want to talk to you more about the opportunity so that's uh a very important way um, by which you can get the attention of a professor. We are going to talk about how to put together uh, your own paragraph two, which as I call it, is the main source of your letter. Now in paragraph two, what you want to do is to start discussing your significant um, achievements. Remember, we mentioned in an earlier lecture that you should write three to four significant accomplishments down on a piece of paper right now this is the time you should start discussing them however these accomplishments of course should be related to um studies you know it should be re related to academics um for example do you have any experience in research um writing do you have experience in collecting data um data analysis or management some people don't even know that is a skill in itself so if you have any organizational skills you this is the time to mention it to talk about it now it is not enough to just mention them the most important thing is how you use explicit examples to support any experience that you are going to write about here so you absolutely have to use examples to support um, your um, significant accomplishment now you want to finish this paragraph by you know flashing um, your GPA or your required test scores now this is just to show them how prepared you are for the opportunity. You just want to, you know, show them something that shows that um, you are very much prepared. Now, this could be your GPA or the test scores like I talked about. However, you should only do this if your GPA is um, maybe good enough to meet the minimum requirements or if you have um, met the minimum requirements on any test scores then you can um, show it off here brag about them but if you have not done that if you don't have a um, if you have a subpar GPA or all your test scores are you know maybe lower than a little lower than required then you don't want to do that here because it's gonna piss them off now the bottom line is you need to make this paragraph count shine you have to shine in this paragraph if you are going to piss them off if you are going to piss off your reader it will be from this paragraph now like i said sell yourself market yourself with confidence i don't care how little you have achieved as long as you have you know over you overcame undergraduate studies then you should have something to sell here we continue to talk about paragraph three and um, this is what I usually call the supporting source because it aims to you know expand on your achievements now in this paragraph what you want to do like I mentioned earlier is to continue to expand on your significant accomplishments now if you remember in the last lecture where we discussed paragraph two we mostly talked about you know your research and um, maybe your writing experience which is important for graduate programs or for professors now in this paragraph you can 
now continue to talk about any instructional uh, experience that you have. Do you have any teaching experience, leadership experience, volunteering experience, service? And again, just like I said in the previous lecture, it is not enough that you mention them. You have to give examples of some of these um, accomplishments. Now, it is okay if you don't have any teaching or um, other leadership experience, but um, it is important that you express, you know, a desire to, you know, be involved in some of these activities if you are admitted. Now, apart from um, expanding on some of these significant accomplishments, you should as well mention one or two uh, soft skills that you have that might benefit you know the professor's research program or the department for example if you love working in teams you can mention that with examples of how uh, or the kind of teams you have worked with in the past and um, you can speak about um, public speaking experience that you have uh, if you have done any oral or poster presentations before those um, skills are important for graduate programs so you should talk about that as well and of course with examples and also if you are flexible with your approach to research especially if you are changing fields then you can talk about adaptability in this paragraph as well lastly if you still have space um, you can maybe talk about how this opportunity will help shape your um, future goals or career goals but this is not really important because this is mostly the um, aim for your statement of purpose so if you don't have a lot of space for this you can um, rightly omit it now I do want to talk about some important points here first in my experience um, with um, working with some um, students or applicants I found it important um, that um, you know uh, students kind of have more success in this process if they express a desire you know to get involved in undergraduate teaching which sometimes takes um, the body away from the professor in terms of funding you you know if you can get a teaching assistantship position then it takes uh, the body of the research funds in the lab so it's important that you express a desire for you know teaching uh, even if you don't like it and this is about getting the money right so it's important that you do that and also um, I think I've mentioned this before talk about presentations you know if you have done any presentation in the past talk about it here and if you haven't you might mention the fact that you are interested or you will be interested in doing this if um, given the opportunity now this is very important um, a lot of people change fields during graduate programs and um, that's okay as long as you can justify why you are ch changing fields right so if you are going to change fields you can talk about adaptability and um, give examples of um, how you have adapted to new situations in the past and um, lastly I did uh, mention in a previous lecture that you know you don't want any negative vibes in this particular document but if you must mention any kind of weakness then you have to immediately follow it with um, you know how you have turned that weakness into a strength in the past here we discuss paragraph 4 which ends the letter so let's get right into the lecture now this is one of the simplest paragraphs that you would um, have to write in this request letter and all you want to do here is to just you know show your enthusiasm for the opportunity and um, maybe summarize how qualified you are um, in this paragraph and apart from that you want to extend an invitation to 
your reader to, you know, go check out the attached documents in case they need more information in order to assess your qualifications. And then um, we talked about attached documents that could help your case um, in the lecture where we talked about ingredients. So if you haven't seen that or if you have forgotten, please check out that lecture. Also, and this is very important, you absolutely want to state your follow-up plan, okay? So that shows you are serious about the opportunity by saying, okay, um, if I don't hear back from you, um, I'm going to, you know, check up on you maybe after a week or so. So you want to state your follow-up plan when you are going to follow up and how you are going to follow up. And lastly, you want to, of course, thank um, the professor for uh, his uh, time and consideration. And lastly, you want to use basically one of these three um, greetings, sincerely regards or best regards. Then you end with your first name and last name. Now, there are some things that I want to point out or stress in this paragraph. Um, of course, I've talked about looking at the lecture on ingredients in order to see vital documents. And one of them is your CV, a well-arranged CV. Now, if you are going to send a hard copy of this letter, which um, is usually rare, as most conversations occur via email at this stage, at least. Um, but if you are going to send a hard copy, of course, you want to sign uh, like physically sign your name um, right before you put your first and last name. And um, this is very important. If you say you are going to follow up, please make sure you follow up at the exact time and um, <coughs> date. So if you state a follow-up plan, make sure you stick to it. Now, you don't want to cold call a professor they don't have time for you know for picking a stranger's call so you don't want to do that it might even irritate um the particular professor so i would advise that you stick to email um usually after three um follow-up if after three follow-ups if the professor does not reply i usually advise you move on to the next professor because ideally you want to have at least two or three people that you are looking to work with but most of the time a lot of people are nice a lot of professors are nice they would you know reply you let me pause here for now and next i'm going to talk about how i used some of these ideas to secure a high level postdoc position outside my immediate field of study like and subscribe if you like this video and i'll see you in the next one bye